Let's go back to the AdventureWorks app that we started in the last module and get oriented to the ClickView interface. A couple of reminders first. Control T opens the table viewer. It's a tool that you use if you're unsure of how your data model is constructed. Control E opens the script editor. Here you can see the specifics of any data transformations that the developers might have done. Like almost all things ClickView, there are multiple ways to create a new object. An object is simply a thing that you add to your interface. Charts, graphs, and list boxes are all objects. Some people like to have something on the toolbar so they can simply click a button to start building a new object. If that's you, go to the View menu, Toolbars, and Design. The Design toolbar is pretty handy, so I'd recommend using it. You can also go to the Objects menu. You can click Object, New Sheet Object, and then you select the object you like to build. Personally, I like to right click. It gives the new sheet object menu, plus it puts the object about where you right clicked instead of sticking it at the top left of your window, like the object menu or the toolbar buttons. To demonstrate, let's learn how to make a list box. First, the toolbar. Click on the list box button, and a dialog box comes up. We'll go through some of the properties in a minute. So for now, we'll just choose country in the field dropdown. One word of caution. A mistake that a lot of beginners make is that they logically assume that since the field you choose is the most important part, you would naturally make that choice first, which means top left. They'll click in the title box and start typing a field name and nothing happens. After a few choice words, they'll move down one box and choose from the field list. Don't get frustrated. It still happens to me now and again. So we'll choose country and click OK. See how it puts it to the top left? Now try right clicking. We'll add a new sheet object and list box. And choose city. Click OK. See how it places it where you clicked? It might not seem like a huge deal, but once you start adding a bunch of objects, you'll see how frustrating it is to use the toolbar and have everything new piled on top of each other. Let's just arrange these a little bit real quick. You can click and drag. To edit the properties of an object, right click and choose properties. Each object has a long list of properties to update or change. As we learn about building the various ClickView objects, I'll be building on what we've learned, so don't be alarmed if I skip things that might look interesting. We'll most likely hit them as we go. There are three properties on the General tab that we should look at. First, let's go back to the title option that I warned you about. It's actually pretty useful, especially if your field names are database friendly and not people friendly. By default, ClickView uses the field name as the title of the list box. If you want the title to say something different, just type it in here. Let's give it a try. We'll call it Sales City. We'll click Apply. And you see how the title changes? Now click OK. And let's look at the behavior of a list box. Select Atlanta. The rest of the options turn gray. That means that they're outside the possibility for the current set of data. In other words, if you've limited your data set to the city of Atlanta, it's not possible for data from Albany to be included as well. It's a little easier to understand when we look at the country list box. Atlanta is in the United States, so by choosing it, United States is white, meaning that it's available in your data set. Also, the data can't be in both Atlanta and France, so France is grayed out. Go back to the properties of the city list box by right-clicking. Imagine that the requirement is to hide unselected values in your list box. Click Hide Excluded, and then Apply. Now the unselected values are hidden, but it's still gray where they should have otherwise been. I don't use this very often, but I do get the request now and then. Usually your best path is to explain to the requester the value of the green, white, gray, as opposed to hiding the alternatives. You'll almost always change their mind on hiding the alternatives. A really handy option is Show Frequency. Go ahead and click it and then Apply. 
It shows you how many times a value shows up in your data based on what you have selected. Let's click OK and Clear. As an oversimplified example, imagine that you wanted to count the number of cities where you have sales. You write something like count city and you wind up with a crazy high number. A quick look at the list box with show frequency checked would show that Ballard is in there 63 times. That little check reminded you that you should really count distinct cities, not just cities. If you do use it for troubleshooting, don't forget to remove it before you publish your app. Let's go back into properties and click on the sort tab. You'll see a few different ways to sort your list box. The top one is state and refers to the state of the selection, whether or not a value has been selected. Let's look at the behavior. The default is auto ascending. Click OK. On a list box like country where all the values are showing, nothing but the color changes when you make a selection. Select Canada and now unselect it. When you make a selection in city, the selected values go to the top. We'll select Atlanta and Auburn. Both go to the top. And let's clear again. If we go to the properties on the country tab and change this to ascending and click OK, now when you make a selection, it goes to the top. Ascending and auto ascending can be very confusing to beginners. Your best bet is to try it both ways and choose the behavior that you like. Let's clear. And let's look at the presentation tab. Let's create a new list box based on year and go to the presentation and uncheck single column. Click OK. Now drag the bottom of the list box up and watch how the, the values go side by side. It's much nicer. To see the difference, let's go back into the properties, recheck single column, click OK. Now there's a scroll bar. Let's go back in, uncheck, and take a look at alignment. You can align it either by text or numbers. For us, let's center both and click Apply. Looks nice. Now go to the caption bar. Your most basic choice is whether or not to actually show it. On the year list box, uncheck show caption and then click apply. See how much less space it takes? As a general rule, if it's obvious what the data is in the list box, you can hide the caption. Things like year, quarter, or month are good examples. Let's click OK and resize. Now let's go to the caption tab on the city list box. We'll right click, properties, caption. We'll move this so we can see what's going on. Take a look at the special icon section. Those are those little icons at the top right of the object. Let's check menu, print, copy data, and send to Excel, and click apply. See all the little icons? Sometimes they're appropriate and sometimes not. To me, they make things look cluttered, and the truth is that you can get by without having them on the object, you can right click to get most of them. A couple of exceptions on list boxes with a lot of data are search and select excluded. Both are pretty handy and help remind your users that there are options. So let's select that. Unselect what's there, leave search, select excluded, and click OK. That's it for the lowly list box. I know that it seems we spent a lot of time on it, but it's really the foundation of how ClickView functions and probably the most used object that you'll create. 